There he is. Hey, nice hat. <laughs> What's up, Michael? How you doing? What's up, Mike? How's it going? Good, good. Very good. Got my lawn mowed today for the first time this year. Oh, so my God. Nice. I did that last weekend. What a disaster. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. I'm Shane and we're here with our Sunday podcast as usual on YouTube. Thanks very much for joining us. You can also listen on your favorite podcast app. But if you're here on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. Like this video and give us some comments. We want to converse with you. We want to have some fun down there in the comments. So let us know what you thought of the episode. And if you have any questions or thoughts to share with us. You can also go to 5idiotstalkingtoys.com. That is our, our website that will get you all the links for everything related to the show, all of our socials, and of course, our uh, merch shop. You can support the show there, grab a t-shirt or a hat, and also you can visit rogue5toys.com. That is our collector page, our sales page. You can hang out with us there and have some fun and get some great collectibles as well. Uh, we, have a, we have a special episode tonight. I think we're all kind of jacked up for this. We're excited um this uh kind of is close to us because this is uh tied in with the the genesis of this podcast and some friendships here that you guys have been able to enjoy that we've been, we've been able to share with you so let me bring in uh two idiots let's start with two idiots tonight <clears throat> john is here and brandon is here oh look at those beautiful faces hi <laughs> brandon's larger than he thought he was going to be hello wow I got scared. This is a good this is a good shot here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the regular view so we don't throw everybody off. Here we go. What's, What's up, up boys? How's it going? Good. So where are the uh the brothers from Long Island? We're missing two. Well, so the word that I got was they've had enough of Brandon traveling all over, you know, uh yeah. you know, trekking across the United States for every event that you know, that that could possibly be, um, you know, you know what we say, if, if you have an event, Brandon will attend it. So they got tired of that. So they're right, on their own correct. excursion. Correct. So they're on an excursion tonight. They are going to join us though. So nobody get too upset, too worried. You're not going to miss the brothers. Charles and Christopher will be, be here in a little bit. The show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, John wants the limelight to himself for one episode. All right. So again, a special episode, you know, I always want to like reveal, but the truth is, is I realized this the other day when people click on this video and they see the title, they already know the reveal. I'm there not revealing anything. Michael Havens is going to be here tonight to join us. And we are excited about that. He is the, uh, the one who started the Imperial Commissary. We all call it the IC on Facebook. Uh, the number one Star Wars Facebook group, the largest. And he is also the one who conceived and came up with the ICCC, the Imperial Commissary Collectors Convention. And why do we right. love that, guys? What's 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 the genesis there? Uh, that's how this podcast came to be. That's correct. That's where we all met. Exactly. Yep. Correct. 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 <laughs> Yes, uh, you guys have heard the story a bunch of times. Uh, I chatted with John. He used to have live sales um, very regularly on the IC. Uh, and I bought something from him. And we started a conversation and a little bit of a friendship. And we just, we said we would meet up at the convention. And yep. uh, and then these uh -huh. other guys were having a similar experience with John, talking to him, chatting with him. Chatting I, heard, with Chris. I heard John talking. Didn't know what his face looked like. And then <laughs> I was like, wait, I know I've bought some stuff from you. Yeah. And then I was having lunch with uh, Charles and Christopher because I was buying some stuff from Charles. And then uh, that's how it all started. Right. And then one and then Waffle House trip later. Well, somebody <laughs> said, hey, there's room sales here. And the next thing we knew, we were five friends, five fast friends uh -huh. yeah. and uh, traipsing around the Sheridan. So much right. All right. Let's bring in our guest now. He's been waiting patiently, listening to our stupid voices and chatter uh we're excited to have him here mr michael havens is here hey how you doing thanks for having me i appreciate it of course thanks for being here uh sure. i was having a funny thought of, uh, about you today when we were <clears throat> we were getting ready for this and i said 
I got to make sure to tell Michael that we wanted to have you on so many times already to this point. And I remember thinking to myself when we had, uh, you know, 110 subscribers and we were, I said to myself, Michael doesn't want to be on this stupid show that nobody watches yeah. and nobody knows anything about. <laughs> so finally, we've got a little something going here and it's finally uh, overdue. You're crazy. For the record, um, I, I like to be on any shows. Um, obviously, I'm a complete narcissist and like to see my face. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, uh, honestly, uh, anybody that grows a hobby, man, you guys' story, the way that you've come up and the way that you found each other is wonderful. And uh, it's not my fault to everybody out there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but brought uh, five yeah. idiots together. Yeah, it's nice, man. And to be honest, anybody that grows a hobby, even if it's a podcast with 10 people, 50 mm -hmm. people, you get 20 listeners a week. That's 20 more people that learn about Star Wars from you. And that's a great thing. So uh, believe me, I always say this when it comes to collections, too, because sometimes people are like, oh, your collection is so big or this collection is so big or I'll never have that. It doesn't matter. Everybody's collection is a fingerprint, man. It doesn't matter if it's how big or how small it is. You still collect Star Wars toys. Right. That makes us all the same nerd. Um, which makes it wonderful. And that's why, no, please, you could have had me on with five guests. I don't care. <laughs> you talk about Star Wars. It's what I talk about anyway. So may as well record it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'll tell you another thing. There, we, we, we have other similarities with the group. I mean, the group is the first Star Wars group that I was in uh, as an adult starting collector, you know. Uh, you know, we just kind of go about the hobby a very similar way. Our mantra that we share with our viewers when they ask questions, we do some live streams recently and take questions live. It's it's be nice, have a good time, collect how you want to collect. Um, don't tell you know, don't let people tell you what to do with your collection. You know, and and you know, we're 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 huge supporters of no repro. It's it's just similar things. It's just have fun, be nice, be thoughtful and caring to the other people that are in your, in your hobby. And you know, now that we've just got like this little tiny bit of something going on in the Star Wars universe, which which is what we are. Um, you know, people reach out to us. They get riled up sometimes, or they want to rile us up, or they just love that kind of stuff. We don't we don't get involved. It's just like, hey, we be nice to everybody and have fun. And that's what I love about the group. Absolutely. It happens a lot. And I'll tell you, with the Facebook groups, it's it's really tough because we have a standard set of rules. Everybody can read them. Everybody has to follow them. But then you get the people like, you know, you do get the the ones that want to be difficult. And those people, I mean, honestly, man, you can't let them get to you. You mm -hmm. just got to feel sorry for them. Uh, I feel bad for them. If you have enough time to complain about however somebody's like, making a star wars podcast you have way too much time on your hands you should get a hobby um, yeah. but star wars isn't a good enough hobby for you or something you need a different hobby right yeah i mean do something with more variants maybe maybe something with more than 96 i don't know you know yeah. pokemon cards there's like a bazillion of those yeah uh but that's the thing man and you can't let them get to you because if you look at them what do they do to make this hobby better to make somebody's life better to make a day better sure maybe they I don't know. I don't know. But you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. They're n they, if they could just spend that time instead of hating on you or hating on me or hating on whomever the flavor of the day is, right? building something, there'd be 400 conventions to go to every year. And I could go to them all instead of having to work it and like being like, ah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Instead, I could be like, oh, cool, you know, a Boba Fett. But I don't get to do that at this one. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, it's 5 o'clock. Somebody throw me a pulled pork sandwich so I don't die and I'll eat it in a right. closet. You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, and I have a question for you later that's, like, kind of right in the wheelhouse of what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so let, let me let me run it back for one second, and we'll close up that little – our little uh, Five Idiots Talking toy, Toys history. But I don't know if you remember this. This was from one of your live sales my genesis of this whole scenario goes back one step further. I was in a live sale with you. It was, you know, one year into COVID been locked in my house, like a, you know, like a trap rat. Yeah. And I said to you, he's I still, don't have he's any still locked in his house. Yeah, I'm still three years later. I'm still locked in here. Is that why it's green in there? They got, rid <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's toxic in here. Open they got window, rid of my man. office and I'm trapped at home now. 
<laughs> I, I said to you in a live sale, I said, I don't have any local friends who collect anything. Don't collect Star Wars. I have all my friends are casual Star Wars fans. They're, they're writing me now that they know about this show. They're writing me all the time about the movies and the shows. Yeah. But I said, I don't have anybody that I could go to and would bring with me. There's just nobody that's going to be interested in Star Wars like I am. And you said, just go. And yeah. I was like sitting on my couch and I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not the one to jump off my couch and jump on a plane so easily. Yeah. And you said, I swear, if you don't if you go and you don't make one friend while you're there, I will refund your ticket. I mean, that's what you said to me, you know, three, what <clears> was it, I, three, year, three I years ago that. now. That's hilarious. And I got yeah, there and I, I would say <laughs> I got there and I found you pretty quick, you know, like later that first night, a Thursday night or something and said hello. But that that's how I got there. I mean, you taught you 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 convinced me to to buy a ticket, jump on a plane, and get out of my house. My wife said, "Go get out of this house for a weekend," and and yeah. that's it. So, I was hoping to not meet anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon wasn't even staying at the Sheridan the first year. We joked that he was sleeping behind the Seven Eleven dumpster the first year. Yeah, we 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 gave him our floor the next year. So, all right, so. Let's uh, let's let's talk about the IC for a few minutes, and then we're going to jump into the convention. I think a lot yeah. of our viewers, I mean, it's got to be majority of our viewers are, are in the group. They know the group, but um, I'm sure there's some out there that 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 tune in and and would like to know about the group a little bit more. How did uh, how did you get started with? Well, let's let's say this: How did you get started with adult collecting? Now we all had some of these kids as toys. I, I, I all these toys as kids. <laughs> I had a lot. <laughs> um, but you know, I was in my, you know, I was in my late thirties before I considered getting a toy as an adult. Yeah. I mean, um, how did you, st how did you start there? I mean, you were, um, you were down in Nashville already. Is that right? Yeah. Well, what happened is, uh, yeah, I moved down to Nashville after school. I got a job with Dell computers and, uh, I went and worked for Dell and you know, when it was still dude, you got a Dell like it that long yeah. ago. <laughs> and, uh, I, I came down with my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. And mm -hmm. uh, we started working and we worked our way up and we started getting better jobs and a little bit more money together. And then one anniversary, um, she bought me a Luke Stormtrooper. And mm -hmm. that Luke Stormtrooper was uh, um, the first collection I got when I was older. I, I don't remember what anniversary it was. It was, shoot, got to be 10, 10 years ago now. Um, and then what I did is I, I put it up on a shelf. Well, there's nothing sadder on a shelf than one figure. So <laughs> right. I called up my mom and I said, mom, do you still have all my Star Wars stuff? And she said, it's still in your closet. And I had this really cool closet, like in my room when I was a kid, it was like the, like half height. So it wasn't all the way to the floor, but like it had like a good level and you could open it up. And I had like, you know, the C3PO and R2D2 bank with the button that right. plays like, this is my counterpart, R2D2, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I had a drumstick tied to the button that tied through a string that went to the door. So when you open it up, that played like very, oh. very old school. And Ferris Bueller. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's cool. Very Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Very Ferris Bueller. Absolutely. <laughs> like when he's in the bed, for sure. Same deal. Um, that's probably where I got the idea. But uh, so that was, uh, she was like, yeah, it's still in the closet. So I'm like, what? All right. Because I was like, I was a super collector when I was a kid. My friends and I, we used to hunt toys. We used to go all the different places. I got the best stuff in the world, and I paid nickels for it back in the day. So I went home and uh, to visit, and I was like, all right, I'll load up the car and because we were going back down with the car. And uh, so I put the bins in the car and everything, and it was a big trunk and a big bin and Lo and behold, it's 99% power to force too, like every other collection. I, <laughs> I guess I was younger than I thought I was. Um, and then, uh, but I did have my Falcon. I did have an 80 and an AT uh, with actual cannons. And I remember I got those cannons for $5 each from Winchester Antiques because I walked in and he had a complete one. And I said, I'll buy the cannons for me for five bucks each. And he was like, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I still got that one um, up on my cabinet. But uh, so I got that stuff back and it, I was like, all right, now I got a couple things. You know, I had like the Imperial attack base, my brother's Falcon, uh, my ad and stuff like that. And uh, well, the ad all that stuff I kind of collected. I was more of a collector when I was younger than a, a go to the store and buy them because uh, I was okay. born in 1980. Uh, yeah. So they were found in antique stores and stuff like that. Um, 
but anyway, we used to play with them. We used to have sleepover stuff like that. So we we amassed decent sized collections, and uh, I got it all back and I put it all up. And to tell you the truth, I think I had like twelve figures, and none of them were mint. None of them were complete. None of them were you know, and everything was else. Power of the Force too. So what I did is I uh, went and I did what uh, every collector does when they start buying. They go to eBay and they're like, "Oh, I need a Stormtrooper." Click, you know. And then it comes with the Repro Blaster, and you're like, "Don't yeah. even know it yet." And then uh, you go, "Oh, you know, I've got all this. I'm gonna get rid of all my Power of the Force too, and I'm gonna sell it, and then I'm gonna get the money so I can buy like whatever and whatever, you know, and uh, whatever, so you could." build up the collection you know and i sold all the power of force too i think i got like eight bucks you know because <laughs> <laughs> it was all loose power of the force too that's, a that's a lot thing, but still you got two <laughs> you know? tacos out of it yeah mm -hmm. exactly so i was like all right that'll buy my yak face but it did not um and uh then i i was like well what i'll do is i'll collect you know the whole the whole run that's what i'll do and i'll put it up i'll get a really nice case and that's where i'll leave it um, so I was collecting the whole run, but the way I collect is I'm like, all right, I'll go buy a Darth Vader case. It's got 50 guys in it, and uh, I'm going to take out this one and this one because they're dead mint, and I'll sell off the rest of them, mm -hmm. and then that'll pay for my Star Wars toys. And the reason why you do that is so it doesn't – because I see sometimes people in this thing where they just put in so much money, and they uh, get themselves under because it becomes almost an addiction and you never wanted to get to that point. Right. You want to get smart deals, get good deals, make trades with friends. And that's how you amass these massive collections. Nobody just goes out there and just clicks buy it now on eBay for these massive collections. Uh, there is no longevity in that. So I would buy the Darth Vader heads and I started having tons of vintage figures, extras, extras, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I was on a Star Wars page on Facebook because somebody told me Facebook has Star Wars like two years into me buying off of eBay. And I was like, no way. Actually, you know what? I think it was Jared Cope that did it. You know Star Wars Tracker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Star Wars Tracker, Jared Cope reached out to me on eBay and he said, hey, your pictures are really, really nice. Can I use some of them for Star Wars Tracker? And I'm like, what the hell is Star Wars Tracker? And he was like, <laughs> it's this really cool app that I'm making right now, and I'm just building the back end for it, and I'm going to release it on the Facebook page. Like, well, what are you talking about Facebook pages? And he was like, well, you know, check them out. So I went and I joined the Facebook, and uh, I was on the big Star Wars group at the time. And what happened is I was I started doing a contest, and it was a silly little contest. What I do is I just take a vintage figure, and I would zoom in really, really far, like really, really far. And then I would make the picture black and white. And uh, I would say, who am I? And then what would happen is everybody would guess. And whoever guessed the figure first would win the figure and I'd ship it to them for free. Because I had so many figures, it didn't matter. And my wife and I, our jobs got better and better over this time. So Star Wars figures really didn't matter anymore um, mm -hmm. as far as like a monetary thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would do is I'd just ship them out. And then what happened is the admins of that page started bashing me. And they started saying that the only reason why I was giving away free figures was to get people's addresses that had collections in order to rob them. Um, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? That's not right. And I tried to fight it out on the boards. And you guys didn't know. If you ever try to fight something out on the boards, you literally have people that have no grasp on reality whatsoever just shouting lies at you uh. forever. They will, you can never convince them, you can never make them understand, you know what I mean? It's just, it's insanity. So I tried that for like a week, and then I eventually was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to start my own group, and if anybody wants to come, fine. And I went, and I just went to, it's very easy, create yourself a Facebook group, super simple, do it, the more the better. The more Facebook groups in this hobby, the more people in this hobby, it's better. Um, even though some of the older school groups will tell you it's not. Uh but it is. The more people, the better. Who you? All these people, who are they going to sell their Boba Fetts to when they're 80 years old and they break a hip? If they want, <laughs> it, it, like, oh, no, you're under the age of 35. You're garbage. No, I mean, we need, new, we need like new. a whole subsection that's like that. Yeah. We yeah. need new, new, new collectors all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so what happened is they, I was like, you know what? Forget it. And then I just started up this little group. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to run a contest for the logo. And the logo, the Imperial Commissary, I've got a stick in there somewhere. But yeah, the logo, right? Yeah. So I ran a contest for the logo. That logo cost me an Admiral Akbar to be, uh, <laughs> go baptize. 
I was like, one free Admiral Akbar. We need a logo for our page and blah, 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 blah. And we're the Imperial Commissary. And I called it that because like a commissary is where you go in the army to buy stuff. Right. And uh, the bad guys are cooler because they have helmets. So, <laughs> That's but, funny. Uh, so did that Imperial Commissary started and started. There was five people. Then there was 20 people. Then there was 50 people. Then there were hundreds of people. And then people started buy, selling, and trading. And the thing is, is we had these very strict rules, which at the time on the internet in general um, was non-existent. Uh, no cussing. I mean, it's still some people come on the page and they get tossed like immediately. And then they write us and they're like, what the heck? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, sorry, but we have a no cussing rule. If you promise not to cuss anymore, you can come back. But yeah. see, we have those rules. It's not like I don't cuss in real life. I'm right, mail, right. Mail, yeah. Man, you watch watch a jet game with me. You'll see my mouth turning. Mm -hmm. into yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is, we don't collect Star Wars to we don't collect Star Wars for the money of it. We don't collect Star Wars for the business factor of it at all. We collect Star Wars because it reminds us of our childhood. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, it wasn't about sex. It wasn't about cussing people out. It wasn't about fighting with people. It wasn't about drama. It wasn't about picking on people. And the way we originally ran it, my original rules for the Imperial Commissary were if you were at a sleepover and the kid's mom came down with brownies and anything at all that you're saying, if you couldn't say it in that situation, don't mm. say it. Mm. And uh, that's the reason why, because this is supposed to be a sleepover. And then what happened is it started getting totally crazy because it became not just buying and selling. See, what happened is I went up to this. It, it snowballed out of control for no reason. That's why I'm here. Well, um, let me let me let me break in for one second, yeah. Michael, because Charles and Christopher are here and uh, they want to hear this conversation. They're very excited as well. But yeah. I'm going to like I'm going to throw the throw the mic back to you in one second. Yeah, no Christopher worries. Wildminster is here. Hey, What's go up? Yankees! <laughs> yeah. What's up, Mike? And Charles Wildminster is here. Hey, hey, what's, up? Oh, hey what's up, guys? Hey, how are you? Good, good, and, good, good. And we're going to get listening. Michael front and center. Oh, We've been Jesus. listening to you in the background, so don't worry. Oh, right. It's actually a part of the conversation. You could have come in any time. I didn't Charles see that. Frozen. I don't have the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Maybe, is uh, Charles, Charles is frozen. <laughs> he keeps freezing. Yeah. <laughs> Am I? He He's got the best internet, the best bathroom <laughs> yeah. internet that you could possibly <laughs> buy. <laughs> Are you sitting on the can? Am I freezing? Or? It looks like it. Am I freezing? <laughs> yeah, you're freezing. Michael, these boys just made a, a trek down to Atlantic City for the uh, for a couple couple nice. of nights. The dirty so, jerseys, I try to like it, but nothing wrong with Atlantic City. No, absolutely not. No, no. it's a great time. <laughs> nice and close. We got uh, Tunica, Mississippi, down here. It's much more garbage, but the same kind of idea. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were just text, texting us before, like we're almost there, but we're in the slums right now, and we're like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Atlantic City. <laughs> Right yeah. before you get to Atlantic City, you got to drive through a lot of those streets that are like really oh, yeah. iffy, and you're like, "Oh God, lock the you window." Get, you drive through all the streets from Monopoly to get yes. there, and <laughs> they're not they're not as nice as Monopoly. <laughs> well, who do you think is no. cooking the ninety nine cent shrimp cocktail, guys? Come on, <laughs> <You got it. laughs> that's right. True that. But, uh, so yeah, finish, Atlantic City finish the story with you starting the uh, IC because oh, I yeah. uh, I heard it all. I don't so know where was I? I see is a sleepover. Okay. So it's kind of like a sleepover. So what ends up happening is uh, there's going to be, uh, I think it was Lexington had a Comic-Con or a toy show or something. And uh, I was like, okay, first real life I see meetup. Just click event on a Facebook page. Anybody can do this. I suggest you do it. It's very easy. I want everybody to do exactly what I did. There are no secrets. I'll help you. Um, and that way I got more cool stuff to do. But uh what happened is I just clicked event and I said, okay, I'm going up to this Lexington toy show or whatever. Um, and we'll meet up and we'll just hang out. You know, we'll have a pizza party and people could buy, sell, trade, bring your toys, whatever. And I was like, I don't know where to have it. So what happened is somebody on the IC knew somebody who had a comic book shop in Lexington. So we were like, all right, we put the comic book shop down. And then I went to the comic book shop. They didn't know what would happen at all. I had like, I think, I don't know, five pizzas or whatever. And uh, 
Threw those on the table with the comic book shot. That dude was nice. He had a little table section set up for us. And I brought a, uh, you remember the kids projectors from school when we were little? Where it did, 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 you know? Yeah. And uh, I had the Revenge of the Jedi trailer. So I put that, wow. hooked it all up into the kids, the projector. And then people started coming. And then like three people started coming. And then five people started coming. And there were like 15 people. And then all of a sudden, for no reason at all, walks in the door is Kim Simmons, the man who shot Skywalker. <laughs> so he's the guy who took the pictures on all the boxes and whatnots. And uh, he just showed up because he saw it listed on the IC. And he saw the event listed on the IC. And he was like, hey, I'll come through. And we were like, holy crap, because it was Kim Simmons. And we're yeah. like. You know, just a couple nerd friends that were like, you guys, like, look at what you did. You met up at one thing, and then it just snowballed. Um, and then what happened is that one turned 15, turned into 30. And then 30 turned into 60. And then 60 turned into 200. And then 200 turned into, like, 700 at a celebration. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to do a big one. I'm like, I'm going to do it in Tennessee. Never done one in Tennessee. That's where I'm from. We're going to do the big IC meetup in Tennessee. And I said, okay. So I went to go rent the building. And I went down to the Williamson County, yeah, Williamson County AG Expo Park. And I said, I would like to rent your 4,000 square foot meeting room. And they said, okay, it's $10,000 for the weekend. And I said, holy crap, that's a lot of money. I go, <laughs> <laughs> how much for one rib? No. <laughs> Did anybody get that one? That's an old one. Uh, all right. But uh, no, I was like, uh, well, all right, that's a lot of money. Let me think on it. And they were like, but. For $16,000, you get the entire 178,000 square foot rodeo. So I happen to be talking to a buddy of mine on the phone, and I'm like, well, what should I do? And he's like, oh, man, go big or go home. And that's, you know, I have the Atlantic City mentality. So I was like, all right, I'll roll the dice. And uh, what I did is I got a giant venue. I had never booked a vendor table in my life. I have never booked a movie star in my life. I didn't know what piping <clears throat> was. I didn't know how to make a banner. I didn't know how to measure out a venue. I didn't know anything about it. Um, but I did it. I just bought it. And was like, hey, we'll figure it out. And uh, luckily enough, I used to do a podcast uh, back in the day. And one of my listeners was this guy named Philip Brown. So Philip Brown calls me up. He's like, and this is how my podcast went. I was like, so I just rented 170 out the 8,000 square feet. And I'm going to throw, I guess, a convention or something or a really big meetup. Uh, if anybody out there knows anything about that, that'd be great. And like, that was it. That was my pitch. And uh, he calls me up and he goes, hey, man, um, I happen to throw all the conventions for the Rotary Clubs of America. And I said, well, yeah, that's cool. And he was like, would you like help? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I want to help, man. And he's been my convention manager the whole time. But that's the wonderful thing. That is what has happened since the beginning of the Imperial Commissary through everything, whether it's the meetups, whether it's the people buy, selling, and trading, whether it's ICC Con, whether it's the room sales, which have nothing to do with us. But still, it's an organic thing that has just happened. Um, all those things come from one thing. And that one thing is, uh, I don't remember. Shoot. <coughs> But uh, <laughs> well, I just went completely blank. I had a really good point. Uh, <laughs> no, the one thing, I got it. The one thing is the people that collect Star Wars, that's not what their job is. That's not what their real life is. Right. So all of a sudden, my security guy is an Army Ranger, and he knows, like, SWAT guys and snipers. I mean, we had this one guy last year that he had at the time of the con, one of our security had the longest record for a sniper shot with a live kill ever at the time of the convention. So he was up on the roof. These guys are so serious. (laughs) And he gave me like this coin. I don't have it here. I'd show it to you. But it was like, it's like the coolest coin ever. And it's got the crosshairs on it and stuff. And it's like, you know, like these are very serious individuals, but they collect Star Wars toys. And then all of a sudden, I got Jim Orman. Jim Orman runs like this podcast and this and that and this. And he does so much. And he does like the, the commercials and stuff. And you guys do the podcast stage and you know the commercials for the podcast. That's Jim Orman. And uh, he does all that stuff. But he just came out as like, I had no idea when we were first hanging out. Uh, one guy, uh, the guy who ran the stage show last year was uh, Mike Michael Lester. And Michael Lester has worked for me just sorting star wars toys a couple hours a week for years and he's also the director of wsmv channel 4 nbc in nashville 
Mm, but okay. like that's pretty good for the guy you need to run the stage show. You know what I mean? It's yeah. crazy. Everybody has these unbelievably high-end special skills that they bring to the show, and that's what's made it so good. Lee Ramsey runs our music every year, and he runs Mize in the Drive, and he's our house band, and that has grown so much, man. I mean, we have specific guest stars that come just for that. Um, it's a, and it's amazing because – you know, it's we're, crazy. we're just a, attendees, you know, like we're, we're just the fans and, and it blows my mind how yeah, much you guys are part of my marketing department. You just don't know. <laughs> it blows my mind how much we bring it... nothing, nothing to the table, Michael. Nothing. <laughs> it blows my no mind how much, here. <laughs> how much is involved in this that we don't even know about. I mean, some of those, so those are some of the, uh, the gen general questions I have for you, but, um, yeah. let me just take a second here to say, uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about the convention, uh, certainly for this year. And it's, it's fun to hear the history of the convention. We're going to talk a, a little bit more about all of that. I want to just say for anybody watching now, if you're familiar, if you want to find out more, obviously keep watching, but you can go to icnashville.com, uh, both for tickets and to get all the information about the show. It's, it's in Nashville. It's Memorial day weekend in May. Uh, but go there now. It's got all the info that you need. It's got the host hotels. It's got how to get tickets. It's got um, what comes with what kind of tickets. You can get multiple different passes. And uh, we'll keep talking and having fun. But go there if, uh, after the show if you want to learn everything about the convention, to see who the guest stars are, what amenities there's going to be, and, and about tickets. Okay? So uh, let me... Let me um, you we literally can, we, just said you guys do nothing for the show, and you literally just marketed that perfectly. <laughs> Shane, Shane is really good at talking, so he's like, yeah, that's, so good. that's great. Keep that's his up, secret boy. power. But that's what happens. Star Wars nerds helping Star Wars nerds. This is, I think, one of the only true conventions that is truly for the fans, by the fans, and it's just because I was dumb enough to jump in feet first into shark-infested waters, and luckily enough, there's like a whole bunch of like shark hunters that happen to collect Star Wars toys. So it totally, it totally worked out, and it shouldn't. But man, this convention is not me. Yeah, sure, I you know pay the bills, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you you know it's just enough to be dangerous around. and to get the right people around you. There you go. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. That's great. That's great. Let let me throw a question out for you, and, and we're going to hop around a little bit. Feel free to tell us about that. You you were just giving us little, uh, little bits about the first one. Um, we can jump back to that. But, uh, what have you found? This kind of ties in. What, what have you found to be the most challenging aspect of all of this? Um, not necessarily, kind of just in general. I mean, even for planning this year. Um, you, you're, you know, a bit of a veteran now. You kind of know, you know, some of the pitfalls and whatnot. But just in general, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of putting this together? Um, the timeline. The timeline. What happens is it's like, I don't know. <clears throat> you you have to wait and wait and wait, and then you have to pull the trigger, and then you have to do like a podcast and not be able to be like, and blah, blah, blah is coming and we're going to do blah, blah, blah. And you got to remember 500 different things that you can or can't say at this time. Right. Um, it's just mostly logistics and stuff like that. But luckily my real life job, which translated very well is logistics. I do a trucking company and a logistics brokerage. Um, so that I would say is the most difficult part. Um, the speed, because what happens is, all right, number one, the general public, loses interest quickly or they don't mm -hmm. hold interest for a long time so as we found as, out with the show yeah there you go <laughs> as far as hype you have yeah. to give them hype all the time you know and you're gonna post up uh, you know what the craziest thing the, no you know what it is the toughest thing is is when i release an awesome guest star and immediately the first comment is somebody going you should get blah 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 and yeah like, that's always i just yeah. released blah 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 that took me six weeks of my life you know what i mean but it's like that I think it's so better. easy, so but, easy. Well, yeah. I used but to be no, the uh, the most difficult part. Most definitely is the speed. If you can't work six a.m. till ten p.m. and crush it for three months of the year, you can't do this. Hmm. Or you can't have your real job, or you can't still be married and have a family, or you know what I mean. There's got to be some kind of give. You have to be able to just crush it. Like my family helps. My wife does all the accounting and all that, and all the books and. Like, that's why we get away with this is because we work together at it. You can't mm -hmm. do this alone. I'll tell you that. It's uh, 
but it's so much and it's so much all at once. Like you could do it alone if you had two years to plan exactly. everything and do it, but it doesn't work like that. Two years out, man, guest stars don't know what they're recording when they're recording. Right. Um, you'd be surprised how many times you lose somebody because they uh, all of a sudden got a movie deal. You yeah. know, and they're going to be in England because that right. just automatically trumps. Um, but the thing is, is sometimes that happens before they get released, which is wonderful. And most of the time it happens before they get released. But the farther out you go, the more those problems come up. Yeah, because, man, even vendors and stuff like that, like sometimes they don't know, you know, they don't know where they're going to be in 10 months. I mean, some I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 months, you know. Yeah. So what well, happens I would, is. I I would say it's safe to say there's five other wives involved in this kind of picture yeah. that you guys are all watching right now. I think it's safe to say there's not one other single wife in this mix that wants us to put on a convention, any one of us. <laughs> They're not chipping in like your wife is. Your wife, I see I see her at the show. She's, she's cool, a, man. She's a maverick. Yeah. My wife, my my wife complains every Sunday when I do the podcast for an hour once a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's not an hour. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> because it turns out to be three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Am no, I, I, I lucked out, man. I mean, I don't think it would be possible without her. Definitely not. Um, I'd definitely be in IRS prison because I'm the kind of guy that's like, oh, you need 10 grand to do this? No problem. Here's 10 grand. And she's like, if you don't write that down, they're going to put you in jail. And I'm like, well, you write it down. <laughs> but I, I think uh, in general, our significant others are pretty supportive of the hobby that we like and they get, a, you know, we all, you know, we've all had kids different ages and a bunch of us have little kids now and the, the wives like that we have that to share with them. We're watching yeah. the shows and they're playing with our, you know, 40 year old toys and they've got their own toys. And so it's fun. But man, yeah, you guys, you guys kill it with uh, with with everything that you need to do for that. She's got her own shop. I mean. Come on, yeah, man. she's got her own yeah. shop. I don't even know how to run it. It's got a bunch of freaking modern in it. I don't know what any of it is. <laughs> People, it's so funny, man. They come to me and they ask me the questions. She's got those lightsabers too, you know. Uh, here, I'll pitch it. IC Toys Nashville um, is her website. Yeah. Uh, she's IC Toys. Um, and what she does is she has a brick and mortar store in Nashville. And she has like Pops and G.I. Joes and pokemons and all this stuff i don't know anything about and uh it's funny because like all right for example i brought her lunch the other day i was there maybe an hour and a half um i screwed up the cash register i uh <laughs> definitely broke a lightsaber and they're like unbreakable lightsabers but i took it apart and thought i could do something and i can't because my <laughs> look like this and it's like tiny electronics uh what else did i do um oh and i spilled a soda in a drawer <laughs> so, that's I, I'm no good with retail. Uh, That's like sounds like something Chris would do at his house, like just completely spill a soda right in the well, drawer. It wasn't even all. my fault. Like I had the soda. Well, it was my fault. I had the soda right there, and I was going through because they had like these baggies, and they had a little monster truck in the drawer right there, right? Because it's got different kinds of toys. So I'm driving the monster truck around, and I just caught it with the side of my hand, and it went into the drawer, and then it was, I don't know. But anyway, you are, you are literally yeah, a big kid. She's all her own thing, man. I mean, you are literally cool. a big kid just walking oh, yeah. around a toy oh, store. Dude. Yeah, that's hilarious. We were at your toy store last year. The um, the other toy this store. It's like my real desk. <laughs> it looks like my desk too. <laughs> I'm a yep. two year old. You didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did a uh, walkthrough of your old toy store. The old oh, location. Yeah, that's the yeah. other side. Yeah. 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 yeah the Wi Fi is sketchy in there because it's the bonus room over the garage. So I can't record there. But yeah, oh no, no. The, we went to the we went to the first location of IC yeah, your, Toys. Your last first year. location. Yeah, your first, oh, you did. Very good. Yeah. How cool was that place? It was like two yeah. square feet, but it that looked cool. like the indoor bunker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all five of us were in there together. We had fun. And that was yeah, it. Right? There was no more room for other people. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, no, there was a it's great. And there's even a warehouse where I could store all my pipe and drape. You know what's the toughest part about conventions? I just saw of it. Gauging how many people are going to come. Ooh, excuse mm. me. Well, Maybe yeah, how many people are going to come man. Like, I mean, the first year, dude, I bought, I think I bought like 10,000 flyers or something. And number one, nobody likes flyers anymore. It's 2024. I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, I still have, if you ever need like 3000 flyers to a show that happened eight years ago. I love but, when uh, you send me stickers from like whatever 20, 2018, yeah. 2019. I love that. I'm like, he's oh, got yeah. so many stickers left. Yeah, well, that's the thing, because you always have to buy extra 
because you don't know how many people are going to want it. And I don't want stuff to run out. My exclusive's fine, but just like the regular con sticker, I don't want that to run out. So that's why it's it's tough to gauge, and um, you never know. That's why you the speed. Like literally, like I know we're going to have stickers. I know we're going to have T-shirts. I know we're going to have blah, blah, blah. But until I lock down the proper guest stars, I can't start those the artwork for those. I can't start those in production. I can't get so that's why everything happens in a very tight window, yeah. um, closer as it gets. And uh, that's why I've got like these awesome Yeti coolers. They look so good. But um, those were supposed to be at last year's convention, and they ended up coming um, like three days after. So I still have them all, and those will be one of the uh, convention deals this year. Even yeah. though I bought more cups of different kinds, so but still, I it, they were really cool. They changed colors, so I had to get them. A lot of our viewers know that we had a we had a p pretty big booth at the show last year. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we had the second yeah. largest booth, and yeah. we you know we had the grand idea of you know we we all are buyers and sellers, just like you talked about in terms of you know supporting your own collection and, and yeah. whatnot. And so we said, let's do, you know, and we, we, we like the whole like room sale idea, but we, we're not, we're not, re we weren't really interested in doing room sales ourselves. We like going to them. Yeah. So the, the happy medium was like, Hey, let's set up our own booth. We'll have like this big sale ourselves. We'll be in the middle of the floor. We got a great spot and we'll, you know, put a couple banners up and promote the podcast too. And it'll just give us a, a chance to have a lot of fun and see everybody. And little do we know how much work is involved with running yeah. a three table mm -hmm. booth. It was a lot of work. It really was. <laughs> oh my gosh. We, we, we have a small sense of what you go through that weekend, just because we had to run a booth for 12 hours a day, three days. Uh, yeah, no, there's a taste of it for sure. I think the five of us got into so many fights leading up to it, trying to decide <laughs> about the banner and the stickers and everything else. And, and what made me think of all this is listening to Michael talk about, you know, the the the, the merch that he has left over. We yeah. bought 110 shirts because we didn't know how we were like, should we buy 20 shirts, 30 shirts? You know, we bought 110 shirts. I believe we have 104 left and there's five <laughs> guys here that wear one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have I seven have, of I these. I have that shirt. We gave you one last year. Yeah, yeah we I gave have. you one. <laughs> we 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 did sell a bunch of them, but we, you know we well, we definitely overshot it, and we, well, we still laugh the about it. The problem is with shirts is you got to go sizes too on top of yeah. it. That's why yeah. I got yep. out the middleman, and now I just get T-shirt presses, and I get the transfers. And you could buy the transfers on Andrea's store website. You could buy a T-shirt any day. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, but the reason why is because all right, you either go to XYZ place on the internet and you pay nineteen dollars a transfer, and then you're charging forty five dollars a T-shirt, or you go and buy 800,000 transfers and they cost like a buck a piece. You mm. know what I mean? But wow. then you have 800,000 Boba <laughs> Fett's. <laughs> but you should see, I got some awesome hoodies because I'll put like 15 of them on it and it's good. Cool. You know what the funny thing is, is, is two years ago, well, the first year I went, which was two years ago, now three years ago, but two shows ago, and I got a Boba Fett shirt, t shirt, love it. And I said, I want to get the hoodie. And I said, let me get the most obscure one that's there. I don't want to have the same one as everybody else. So I walk away with a Dengar hoodie. Nice. And now I walk around and it looks like I'm walking around with a, t with a, a hoodie with like a terrorist on it. Nobody <laughs> outside of Star Wars collectors <laughs> knows who it is. Yeah. My kids are like the only ones who know what it is, but I love it. I love that hoodie. Uh, maybe it'll it's come so out funny. of the Mandalorian or something and everybody will be like, yeah, hey, a great shirt. Yeah, then people will actually know. Where did you get that? Yeah. So for Four this years year, ago, man. He's from like 40 years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so for this year, Mike, who's uh, some of the guests you have uh, showing up? Uh, what do I got? I got all the Rebels. Um, that was ridiculously hard to get. Uh, they never worked all together. Um, that's all a Rebels, huge, that's Emperor, a huge deal. Yeah. Like they never all do They it never together. do that. But I was it, let trying me, to replace the Clone Wars thing from last year, you know? Let me just say, I, we, I was just watching Rebels this morning at breakfast with my kids, and I said, all the Rebels are going to be there. They Both their jaws dropped. You know, they're, 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 they're eight and six. And my wife was behind the island getting making coffee, and she literally dropped her coffee down and said, wait a minute. 
you're gonna have Freddie Prince Jr. there, and she <laughs> she's so mad that she <laughs> she started naming all of his movies. I'm like, he would love you to be there because he's doesn't he's gonna get sick of hearing about Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. He wants to hear you talk about the movies he was physically in. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's gonna say, I loved you from I know what you did last summer, and he's gonna yes. like go home with them. Yeah, she was she was <laughs> jealous. Like, You're the first. <laughs> And we're we're all, we're all over here, us guys going. Well, we hope he brings his wife with him too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. She's uh, no, she doesn't do cons anymore. The thing is, is uh, here's a good way to gauge if somebody will do a convention. Go on to their Instagram and see if they have over a million followers. Mm. Um, because Instagram, you could like, if you got over a million followers, man, they'll pay you like thirty grand just to be like, good morning. So. Mm. You know, fair enough. Really, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, but no, she's got the family and stuff, man. Too. It's it's way harder for a tag team to come than not to come. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you think about it, it's even hard with my wife. We we leave the dog, and then we got to get the house sitter, and then we got to actually clean the house because some other random human's going to be there living. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have in, uh, the rebels and who else? Oh yeah, the Rebels. Uh, then we got a whole bunch of 40th anniversary because it's 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi um, on the 25th, which is the day before the convention starts. So there'll be a lot of people wow. there. Hopefully, somebody will play Return of the Jedi. I tried to get the. There's a movie theater right across the street from the Hoax Hotels, and I tried to get them to play it, um, but they don't have the contract. The only way they could play it because it's like a Regal or something. The only way they could play it is if Regal does a thing, which they may do. They just weren't sure yet, mm. but. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but we have the Return of the Jedi people coming. We have uh, Ula, who's Femi Taylor, um, Twilight Dancer, uh, first one to get eaten by the Rancor. We have Stephen Constantino, uh, who is a Grammarian guard, um, also a favorite of the Rancor. Uh, we have, um, I'm going cold. Don't you guys have the website up? Uh, we have. Uh... <laughs> He's putting you on the spot to see if you'll slip up. Yeah, right? no, yeah, that's the trick. Sarah that's Michelle that. Geller is going to be there. You're having, you're having uh, Ian McDermott, obviously. Uh, we have, yeah, Ian McDermott, um, who's awesome. He's a really, he's actually become a good friend of mine, which is a trip. I mean, because I'm a Star Wars nerd in real life, and uh, it's pretty cool that he like talks to me about stuff. <laughs> and then uh, Samantha Newark, who's Gem in the Holograms. Um, Got to have some stuff for, you know, the non-Star Wars folks because we do um, have to keep the lights on, which uh, requires normal people, not just us. <laughs> uh, and then um, who else? Let me think. Mark Dodson, who's Salacious Crumb from uh, Jabba's Palace. Uh, Simon Williamson, who's Max Revo. Uh, Jimmy V, who's the new in the R2-D2 guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Spencer Wilding, Darth Vader from Rogue One. Uh, who else? Yeah, Spencer didn't make it last year. I remember he. they were on lockdown. Uh, that was right? two years ago, and that's because I told him not yeah. to connect through France because France was really weird with the COVID. Yeah, yeah That's why he got stuck at the French airport. But he's a sweetheart, and he made me a video, so I didn't feel too bad about it. <laughs> but no, no more COVID. You know, that COVID, that was the first one you came to was the COVID con, huh? Yeah, yeah. You no, know, we were the only person to throw a convention that year, and I yeah. got a ring. <laughs> my ring, I, dude. I'll show you my ring. I don't have it. You have a, you have a COVID king <laughs> ring, dude. I do. I have convention <laughs> promoter of the year for 2022 because we instituted all the COVID practices used at conventions. Wow. It was. I remember it being super smooth. You know, it was my first. Yeah, it really. On, in all honesty, it was my first con ever. But. Sorry. I mean, it was well, super smooth. Dude, I uh, I honestly, because like we were telling, like saying before, how people sometimes mess with you and they're more than willing to like spend a lot of time messing with you. So yeah. honestly, until I walked into the actual ceremony and there was like, I don't know, like uh, uh, Sean Crawford happened to be another uh, inductee into the Hall of Honor in Vegas. Uh, so I saw him there and I'm like, all right, fine. And nobody's screwing me. Because honestly, I thought people were screwing with me because it was just an email, then it was a letter, then it was a web page. It's all things I can do. And, uh, you know, my silly I'm in Vegas to go get a, a big ring for a big <laughs> honor, you know, I, I thought people were messing with me, honestly. And then all of a sudden, like, you remember uh, Bruce Almighty? Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, the guy where the monkey comes out of his thing? <laughs> yeah. so anyway that dude gives me this ring and i'm like holy crap it's real you know what i mean <laughs> like i'm on stage my cabins and i was like what you know and then it's like 
and dude, I, hey baby, hold on, <laughs> Andrea. I don't hear. Her. I was gonna tell her to go get it, man. I'll show it to you at the con. It's like a big Super Bowl ring. It's bonkers. <laughs> well, for it's, it's, not like a, it's not like a poetry.com thing. No, it totally <laughs> wasn't, dude. No, like it was like, <laughs> like you've been thing. chosen. It was actually mostly um die cast people and people that race cars and people that but like tuner cars like fast and the furious type cars like dude you walk in and like they had a super nice buffet an open bar like it was legit bunch of tables all, all nice nice they even had a vw bus like made out of balloons like it was nice it was just like what the heck am i doing here but then like it was for that and i was like oh that's awesome you know i thought i thought people were messing with me till i walked in the thing and i saw sean crawford was there and then i saw the the monkey butt guy from Bruce <laughs> Almighty. I was like, wow, this is a pretty expensive prank. Maybe it's something real. So, well, for any more viewers out there, on. it's awesome. But yeah, that was the first con. That was crazy, man. For any of our viewers out there, if you life. call Brandon up and you tell him he's won a ring for just make something up, if you tell him he's won a ring and that he's got to go to Vegas, he is on the next flight. He will not question it. <laughs> he doesn't care what it's for. If I'll you have there. an event and invite Brandon, he will attend. Yeah. So, Mike, so I saw that you were going to be there, and I had another con to go to that weekend that well, you were in Vegas. But oh, and I was in you, Vegas. Should have gone. I go out to Vegas about once a year, man. I I like Vegas. Yeah, it's our. We hang out there a couple times a year. It's only nice. four and a half hour drive, so we just drive oh, yeah, out there. See, that's yeah. not I bad. do not need to be. Uh, four and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Michael, the for the event this year, the big deal that that we know of so far is it's a brand new venue this year. We're used to the last two yeah. years. It was at the yep. Sheridan, yep. where the convention center was attached, and that was a good setup for the size that you had, you know, at that time. Um, the venue is much larger. Obviously, it's going to be able to accommodate a lot more attendees. I'm guessing that's going to speed up the entry process. I, I, we didn't feel that last year because we were at the booth, right. you know. But we know that you've talked about, you know, that was one of your goals is to speed up that experience. Yep. Uh, what would you say the main difference is this year that visitors, you know, can expect to experience this year that would be something new and fresh? Like, what would you say? Get ready. This is what it's going to feel like. Well, as far as vendors, wait till you hear this. Like every four feet on the convention floor, they have like a little cubby hole that has electric, water, Ethernet, everything. It's awesome. It's like a big, wow. fancy new convention center. But uh, as far as what people can come and enjoy, um, let's let's say we're only talking to the people who have been previously. Um what can you enjoy that's a little bit different? There's going to be a parade on Saturday morning where we're going to have cosplayers. We're going to have some of the uh, big star cars and stuff like that driving. So that'll go the opposite direction of the line. So even if you are in line, you will have something to look at. Um, we will also have the lines pushing in a lot quicker because we have multiple entry points. We also have another entry point for VIP. The good thing about this place is it has a giant hallway um, as opposed to the last place. The last place we went in, you guys know it's a... Uh, Hotel, it was wonderful, um, yeah. but it is a hotel that is set up to have a wedding or a team meeting for real tracks, number 337 or whatever, you know, um, but it wasn't set up to be a convention center. Shoot, we had to like lean the ATST and take two bottom pieces off of the Jetta display only to make yeah. it fit underneath the chandelier. <laughs> but it's yeah. not, it wasn't made for a con, but it was fine for the first year. And the uh, second year, it was fine for two until I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened. But, man, I don't know if you guys knew because you were vendors. But we had the entire, like, corporate complex um, down the bottom where everybody could park extra mm -hmm. for free. And we had shuttle buses running all day. Right. That was totally full by, like, 11 a.m. We had a line around the building. I remember I went into the podcast stage, and we still had a line around the building, and it was 1 p.m., um, and I felt terrible, but what are you going to do? The, they wouldn't let us let in people. Um, we actually got to a point where we were giving away free badges to Sunday to anybody in line that would be okay with leaving. And that was like at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I was like, do you want to trade your Saturday badge for a Sunday badge? You come in all day. Uh, cause Sunday's slower. We're in the South. So, you know, it's, it's the Bible belt. Most everybody does church and then a lunch with family and stuff like that. Um, but it was crazy. So we couldn't put anybody else in. The fire marshal told us to stop selling tickets. Um, 
it, it was it was complete bonkers. But the reason why that was a problem and that won't come up again is just because last year we exploded. Um, we tripled the number of people that attended wow. like that. Uh, and the thing is, is it was you you had the wonderful um, the wonderful ability to see both ways. So you saw it during COVID where it was like perfect. Venue was perfect size. Everything was perfect. Blah, 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 blah. COVID was over and like triple the amount of people were like, let's go. And we weren't expecting that, but it still all worked out. Everybody had a great time. Yeah, the lines were long. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but even the the lines for the guest stars ran pretty well. Um, there mm -hmm. were a couple of them that were a little bit more difficult, but they still, with the amount of people they pushed through, it was pretty amazing. Um, but now we don't have any of those little side rooms or extra rooms or things like that. This is a big giant rectangle convention center. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it fixes all those problems. Like even we have places where we can put lines where we can, you know, if you want to stand in line for X, Y, Z's autograph or whatever, it, it, there's spots for that now, instead of the one hallway that everybody uses for everything. The bathroom uh, and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, even like the food trays were going down that hallway. It was <laughs> the hallway. And yeah. uh, that, that was the big problem. And this venue doesn't have any of that. Now, the other wonderful part about this venue is all the food and everything isn't just one bar or one restaurant like it was at the Sheridan, which was a nice restaurant, but still there's lag. I mean, it would take you yeah. half an hour to get a drink because you got two bartenders serving a thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, so what ended up happening is I was like, all right, what we'll do is we'll get, uh, we'll get a bar company and catering company. So we'll have like, you can get unlimited sodas all day kind of thing. Buy one of those cups. You can do the beers. You're going to have liquor. Um, and outside what we do is since we've got such a big venue, I rented not only the, the Farm Bureau Convention Center, but I rented the Agricultural Center. I rented the Tiny Town Fiddler's Grove. I rented the Train Museum. And I also rented this giant car, um, like dirt track thingy. Okay. Wow. And the reason why I did all this is because originally, same thing that happened with the original building where it was like, well, it's only this much more if you get it all. And I was like, all right, screw it. I'll figure out how to work <laughs> it. And uh, so what's going on is with that outside, we're going to have a place for the gamers because D&D and uh, table games and stuff like that, they usually go really, really long. And their yeah. problem was is the convention would close at six and then they'd be like, well, we need to stay for four hours. And it's like, well, you can't stay for four hours because there's access to the vendor rooms. You know what I mean? Or we have to leave a security there. Now they're going to have an outbuilding so they could play until 11 p.m. if they really, really want to, you know. Um, and then we have an outbuilding for VIPs. So the VIPs, we're going to actually the, for the VIPs, we're going to actually bring them like their own food truck for lunch um we all oh, wow. have food trucks by the way we have numerous food trucks so you're going to have a lot of different decisions that you can make for food and it's not going to be garbage convention food it's going to be good um i'm putting my know, money on the fact that you're going to have a taco truck uh yeah i think saturday for vips is a taco you truck. you <laughs> love taco tuesdays <laughs> <That's pretty> great, <laughs> man. <laughs> you love taco tuesdays and we have stories about uh, uh the the wildminster brothers trading in their toys for tacos back in the day yeah, so it's, man, it's a taco sure, theme. Dude, there you go but uh we got a bunch of food trucks coming this year so a lot more options and a lot easier access to food also we have three stages outside so on those stages, we're going to be putting live music all day, live shows that's all awesome. day. We've got a circus that's coming that's going to be doing some, like, flying from the things and whatnot, like the, you know, I don't know, <laughs> like a fireball or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but it is a circus. we got the Nashville Predators coming. They're going to do hockey shots and stuff like that because we've gotten a big really? in Nashville as wow. well. We also have uh, movie stars that also happen to be music stars. Um, we have the Con Men with Jer Jeffrey Cantor and Stephen Constantino that started uh, in 2019, and they play um, at every ICC Con. And they're, you know, ones from Daredevil, ones from Star Wars. Um, we have uh, one that isn't released yet, uh, Samantha Newark, that's coming down. Uh, there you go. Brand new release. Uh, Samantha <laughs> is coming down. She was in Star Trek and stuff like that, but uh, she does music as well, and she's going to put on a show. And then I'm going to try to talk in the uh, the gem and the holograms there too. But um, what we do is we have this live music. So, say the convention's like crazy, right? And you want to take a break. Then what you do is you go outside into beautiful Middle Tennessee, right? And you're outside, still in a controlled space, 
And then there's food trucks out there. There's live music out there. There's all these different shows. I'm trying to get these glass blowers, but I don't know whether or not I'm allowed to have the kilns. So don't plan on that, but maybe. Because wouldn't it be cool? I remember when I was a little kid and we went to like uh, Epcot. And you walk around Epcot and they got that person blowing the little glass dragons. And I yes. think so cool yeah, yeah. that happened. I, so I love not? that show on Netflix. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. See? So I figure why not? So uh so then what you'll have is you also have they just built this big beautiful twenty thousand square foot brand spanking new big LED screens, uh wow. separate outbuilding, which is right there, easy walk. Um, from the main building, and that's where our main stage will be. So the vendors won't have the complaint of the sound, and also our main stage won't have to be in a little tiny confused area like that. Right. We should be able to fit a thousand people to view the main stage, or maybe even more, fifteen hundred, two thousand. It's it's a big area, and it's brand spanking new. Wait till you see this joint. There is no reason we should be the ones in charge of it. It's bonkers. <laughs> uh, they're like, yeah, it's like state money or something. I don't know, man, but it's like a billion dollar facility and they're letting us have it. So it's it's awesome. Um, and then we'll have the, the live shows there and you can go outside. You can have a bite to eat. You can hang out. You can uh, listen to some live music. Maybe you go take a helicopter ride. And oh, yeah, we're getting a helicopter. Um, <laughs> yeah. But maybe you go take a helicopter ride. Look Do you need a pilot? Because we have one. <laughs> no, nah, I got I, Do you really? Dude, yeah. I want to learn how to fly a helicopter. Will you teach me how to fly a helicopter secretly so I don't have to learn the garbage? Brandon, sure. Brandon is but your man. If it really comes down to it, I can just like roll onto an airbase and be like. <laughs> you remember like, all right, Independence Day, right? And Will Smith goes and he goes to steal the helicopter. It yeah. Would be nice to know how to steal a helicopter if Independence Day happens. Yeah. I don't, it's not It's not that easy. I don't I don't know how, how he right. figured it out. But. <laughs> I'm, right. we'll get I'm it. waiting until we get into the Matrix where I could just yeah. download it. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I know how to fly a Blackhawk. Like, <laughs> That's Brandon. He knows. But no, they're going to even let me brand the helicopter. How cool is a helicopter guy? Helicopter. Can I, yeah, can I fly it? <laughs> I, I don't know if they'll let you fly it. They'll let you fly in it. All right, folks. That is going to be it for this half of the Michael Havens interview. We are hitting the brakes. I'm sorry we have to stop here, but please come back next week. Or if you're looking at this in the future on our next episode, tune in. It might be available for you right now. That's going to be the second half of the interview with Michael Havens, the, the one who started the Imperial Commissary Group on Facebook and the convention that we've been talking about, the ICCC. It is Memorial Day weekend in 2023 in Nashville, Tennessee. So thanks very much for watching this episode. Please go to 5idiotstalkingtoys.com for all of the links about the show, including our socials. Please follow us everywhere for some individual content. And you can also go to rogue5toys.com and collect with us. We have live sales there. We have lots of vintage Star Wars, some modern collectibles, different toy lines, comics that are graded. Uh, everything you could imagine goes up for sale there. And we have some, some fun in the group. So please come join us there as well. And again, come back or tune in now to the next episode as it's available for the second half of this interview. We'll see you next time on 5 Idiots Talking Toys. Bye-bye. <laughs>